Oh, wow, what a disaster, that Japanese nuclear power plant. It was certainly very serious. In fact, it's hard to believe about 20,000 people died. And what's sad was that, you know, they planned for a lot of things, but that backup generator, which was supposed to power the power plant, was located somewhere near the basement. And obviously, a tsunami came in and flooded that thing out. That was probably one of the key problems they had. Well, the nuclear power... Our opponents got their best dream, not the, not the fact that so many people died, but this is certainly an issue here of some of the things that could happen with nuclear power. Uh, gee, we'll see what happens. Hi, I'm Straight Talk, Johnny Straight Talk. You're welcome this evening to view our program called The End of Nuclear Power? Question mark. We're here to discuss this. Uh, you can... Uh, Watch this program this evening if you'd like to call in. The number is at the bottom of the screen. Not right now, but it's, there it is, magic, right there. And uh, you'll be able to see it live tonight, which is May 19th. After tonight, you'll only be able to see reruns. on uh, RCTV, either Channel 9 or Channel 10. And if you want, right here on my table, there's johnnystraighttalk.com. That's my website right there. That is my new website, which will have all the programs eventually that are played here at RCTV. We now are up to 32 programs. So we have two guests here. Uh, very familiar guests. We've had them here before on climate change. And now they want to talk about the nuclear power incident and what it means. Uh, Mr. Ron Dario is here to take the position that it's not the best thing to happen, but really illustrates some of the problems with nuclear power. And now we have Dr. Williams here, who's also been on our program before, and he'll take the pro-nuclear position and make sure that we all know what the reasons are that he feels that we should continue on with that. Uh, Ron, both Ron and Dave will give a brief uh, background. Ground, and then after that, they'll give a, a brief uh, introduction as to what their position is going to be. And then from that point on, we'll have an open discussion. Ron? Okay, uh, my name is uh, Ron Dario, and I'm a retired high school teacher. I taught auto shop for 20 years at Winchester. And uh, I've been involved in sustainability issues for many years. Um, David and I are also both on the climate committee. And uh, I'm delighted to be here. Great, Thank you, John. Yep. I'm Dave Williams. I'm a retired research chemist. I've worked with radiation in terms of radiation protection officer, but I've never worked directly with energy, uh, nuclear energy, but pleased to be here. Great. Ron, do you want to present your position in terms of where do you see this and hopefully mm -hmm. elaborate the details of why you have taken that position? Well, my position is basically that uh, nuclear power is something that we should start to face. out. 
My position is that it, uh, the plants are getting older. Uh, new construction is, is, is uh, severely costly. Uh, that the subsidies that the government is granting the nuclear industry are, are uh, costly as well. Uh, that it's a health issue, as we can see somewhat with Fukushima. That it's a security issue and that if uh, enrichment is in the wrong hands, it As you can see with Iran, uh, North Korea, or Pakistan, that, you know, bombs can be made. Um, I think it's a good time uh, with Fukushima that we start to say that it's time to slowly phase out nuclear. Okay, Dave? I can't disagree with any particular aspect of what Ron just said, but we have about 10% of our electrical supply coming from nuclear energy right now. Uh, it would be difficult to phase it out. Uh, we have had problems in generating any new plants for the last 20 years because of the problems uh, of having insurance and so forth, and nobody wants it in their backyard. On the other hand, it's the new energy on the block, and we have been accepting problems in terms of uh, coal, oil, and gas, and we're not phasing those out. The problems with the uh, costs are at, at present prohibitive, but if we have had a uh, tax on the carbon, they would be more reasonable, and if we had a more reasonable approach to the insurance of this industry, um, I think that we would solve some of those problems that uh, Ron has associated with this. Okay, so let's have a next part of the program, well, which is the, the discussion. Well, the first thing we want to do is because we would enjoy a phone call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> David and I are making a um, offer to anyone who calls in. If you would like, we will. We agreed to uh, meet with you at Dunkin' Donuts for a discussion. We can continue this discussion or anything you want. We will provide the coffee and a pastry of your choice. So we'd like to encourage you to call in. It makes the show, show much more enjoyable and engaging. So if you do that, we will hold to that. You just, you know, you, you both David and I in the phone book, uh, Ron Diderio, <clears throat> you can get me. And if you would make a call, we'll set it up. Great. All right, so with that said, uh, I'm going to just start off a little bit with Fukushima because that's what kind of led uh, David and I to kind of meet with John and to, this, to get this uh, show out. Uh, uh, March... Eleventh, which was a Saturday, uh, we had a, a, an earthquake, and from the earthquake we had the tsunami, and I think we all know it kind of devastated uh, the area at Fukushima, at the uh, and the Daiichi plants are the ones that w had the uh, nuclear power plants. There are actually six reactors there; three of them were online, three of them were off. Um, as you know. Uh, 
these nuclear power plants uh, need to be cooled continually, the reactor needs to be cooled, and the spent fuel needs to be cooled. The spent fuel is fuel that's already been used. It's, it's uh, basically being stored in these pools of water. Uh, they could be 40 feet by 40 feet by maybe 25 feet. deep, something like that, and uh, they need con the water needs to continually circulate or it will turn to steam, no water, you will end up with a meltdown. So as John pointed out, the generators, well, first of all, the cooling system failed, they lost electrical power, uh, the backup generators didn't kick in, uh, they were unfortunately in the, sort of like the basement and they ended up getting flooded, uh, they had backup batteries for eight hours, well, eight hours. I was, uh, we're talking, the, the situation is ongoing now, and we're looking at May, uh, March 11th, April 11th, May 11th. We're looking at two months and going, so that eight hour battery run is long over. So uh, they're still trying to, they're throwing water on it overhead to, to keep it cool while we speak. Uh, they're having, a, one of the major problems they're having is what to do with this water. The water's irradiated. Uh, they did end up uh, letting some of that water go to the sea. I think you might remember that uh, weeks ago. So they have to contain the water. It's not an easy job and still try to get, they've got to get cooling back. Uh, these things have to be cooled for an awfully long time. So it looks like it'll be a little bit longer. They raised the, uh, the severity up to a level seven, which is the highest rating that the most severe uh, nuclear accident is seven, which is on par with Chernobyl. So this kind of led us here to talk about, uh, first of all, uh, you know, our best wishes to the Japanese. Japanese that they can kind of work this out and then maybe to take a little bit, uh, I think the whole entire world from the Germans, the Russians, everybody has kind of taken another look at their nuclear industry to kind of see, hey, you know, what, what can we learn from this? So, um, uh, David, you want to come in on that a little bit? Well, <clears throat> yes, certainly it was a disaster. 20 to 25,000 people have died in Japan because of the earthquake in the Tsumai. tsunami. Um, one aspect of this has been on the nuclear industry, but the plant that was closest to the epicenter has been successfully cooled. It's out of order, but uh, the problem at the Fukushima plant was not due to either the tsunami or the earthquake, but was due to lack of general power in the area, um, so that uh, I think we need to put it in perspective, which is the reason. I'm c concerned. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, th uh, let's look at slide number one, Mike. <clears throat> this is just a little bit of background. Uh, U.S. nuclear plants similar to Daiichi. We have 104 plants in the U.S. There's uh, under, under 400 plants worldwide, by the way. 
Japan has 57 nuclear power plants. 23 of our plants are of similar design as The ones at Daiichi, which are of General Electric uh, mm. mode. And uh, recently, in I th one of the newspapers, uh, they pointed out that five of our nuclear power plants are located in similar earthquake zones that could see a similar earthquake of that severity. So uh, the possibility of a Fukushima-like uh, event happening uh, here is, is a possibility. I also saw that the USGS, the United States Geological, Geological Survey, said that 39 states were uh, susceptible to moderate or severe earthquakes. So we got a lot of area that we could see an earthquake. They're not, they're not usual events, but they happen. So we have to make sure that we have auxiliary power so that we can cool those plants in case of a, a, any kind of a problem. Right. That shows that the plants, and I was talking to David about this before, the plant has to be located near water because that's part of the cooling system and it's also part of the emergency shutdown system. They have to have a large amount of water. So you have to be near a river or you're going to need to be near the ocean. If you look at um, Seabrook Ocean, mm, yeah. they've got two, two three-mile pipes that bring water in and out for yeah. cooling. Uh, if you look at Yankee um, Pil Pilgrim, Pilgrim, Pilgrim Plymouth, Plymouth yeah. uh, of course, you're on the ocean. And uh, Vermont Yankee is on a river, to my knowledge. So, so water is uh, important. And, but I would point out, on the ocean, you end up with a possible earthquake. But the rivers, rivers are not static. Rivers are alive, as we see in our Midwest with the Mississippi. You can have flooding. I was looking at a map, and I don't know, because I, I haven't heard anything, but there were two nuclear power plants in Louisiana. Mm. And uh, evidently, they're not in that floodplain. But, you know, could. So, um, Dave, any, you want to go with that, or we'll try another slide? Let me ask Let's, a question yeah. about uh, the fact is the Fukushima plant is certainly a much older plant. Are any of the plants we have in the United States as susceptible as a Fukushima plant? They, in terms of the age, they probably are. <clears throat> We've been able to uh, continue to use many plants, at least seven. that are older than 40 years here. And they've been upgraded to some extent, uh, but the grandfathering is important, as, as Ron will mention. Uh, I don't think the age of the plant is that concerning. Um, it's just the upgrades. It's upgrades, yes. In the, I mean, you don't think any of the plants we have would have the or generator which is a backup in the basement. Yeah. I think we don't know would. that. I don't know yeah, that. I yeah, I, I would think that anybody who has a plant <laughs> with a generator at the, in the bottom of the basement, and there's a an earthquake and there's a tsunami that hits mm -hmm. California or wherever it may be, is certainly really risking a lot of people. Well, the well, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, I'm sure, will consider that <laughs> if they haven't considered it before, which I'm sure they did. Yeah. Uh, they're not. They're not stupid. <laughs> well, part of the problem is uh, I, I agree that uh, the age alone isn't as long as you yeah. as long as you're keeping it up. But some of the problems. Uh, as uh, David j alluded to, is uh, some of the reactors have been well. The, uh, the, um, 
the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has extended the life of 63 of our reactors, mm -hmm. another 20 years. Uh, I can tell you uh, in reading that some of these plants were grandfathered in. Now, grandfathered in is a, a kind of a problem because what it did, when they were grandfathered in, they were not, they were not responsible to make certain improvements. When they're extended to 20 years, those improvements are still not required. And I think based on everything we're seeing, that, that little rule should be stopped. I mean, if you're going to get another 20 years, then by all means, you need to upgrade. And, and I would like to say... One other thing, on Vermont Yankee, uh, that plant was renewed, although the renewal was probably in the works, mm -hmm. okay? But that plant was renewed a week and a half after Fukushima, after Daiichi plants, a week and a half afterward. They got it renewed. The Vermont legislature asked to postpone it. They said, let's at least see what happened at Daiichi. Uh, X, I think it's X, uh, the, the company, the utility, X Energy or something. I can't quite get their name. But they, they refused. And the uh, atomic, I think the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC, so, uh, sometimes I believe there are cases when they're a little too close to the industry, to the utility, and not looking close enough at the, the public. Uh, there, there have been... Uh, other problems that way. I mean, the grandfathering clause, uh, I, I saw that the, I think it was the Pilgrim or the, the Seabrook plant was trying to get not only a 20 year, but a double 20 year extension, double. The Boston Globe put out and said, at least go for the one, because in 20 years, we may find that there are other things that we develop. So there's a tendency, because the, the expense is so great mm -hmm. to build a new one, the tendency is to keep these going and keep them going and keep them going. And although the age is not always a problem, sometimes right. it is a problem in that, like, for example, the, the situation of where the generators were placed. Those, those things need to be placed. So sometimes the age, there is an age situation when uh, one of the technicians in Japan said, yes, the, the, the tsunami was bad, etc. Etc. But if the plant was a little uh, more modern and had certain improvements, it, maybe the situation wouldn't have been as bad. Okay, we're halfway through our program. I'd just like to mention to any audience viewers, the new ones that just came in and are surfing on the programs, uh, we have two guests here, Rhonda Dario and Dr. Williams. And we have uh, two positions here taken. Ron is suggesting that we phase out the nuclear power plants that we have and as, as practically as possible. And uh, Dr. Williams would like to take the position that we should use what we have. We have other sources which have also risks like coal, oil, we've lived with those, but now why don't we continue on, obviously considering the, the kinds of safety situations you have. David, pull up a slide you want, because we're yeah. gonna we do the row. Okay, let's look at number four, please. Good, yeah, it was a disaster, and uh, Some of the plants survived, some didn't. The Fukushima plant certainly lost power. And so far as I know, no one lost their lives cons considering the fact that there was a ma major catastrophe, uh, not man-made, but, uh, uh, but a natural catastrophe. 
Now, TEPCO is spending a lot of money to relocate families from the evacuation zone, which is about 12 miles in uh, radius and 200 miles square uh, evacuation zone. But they expect to clean up the plant. by January and uh, is going to take at least a decade to clean up some of the rest of the uh, mess that has uh, mm -hmm. occurred as a tsunami. Um, if it's practical, it will be cleaned up like any hazmat facility uh, in terms of um, usable, usable area again. And certainly some of the area will be usable just because of the decay of the short-lived isotopes that are uh, the problem at uh, 30 kilometers from the plant. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the, the next slide. Uh, we've lived with, as John has said, uh, coal for a long time. There's been mine collapses in the last year, and they've paid the fine. They haven't improved the, the mines. We've got 500 mines in the United States. Nobody paying for black lung disease. And uh, for so far as oil is concerned, we had a tremendous spill with, uh, in the Gulf. Uh, there were refinery deaths last year, uh, and the, the companies paid the fines. These were not natural disasters. These were man-made disasters. Um, so far as natural gas is concerned, we have new techniques now where we're able to fracture the earth and get uh, natural gas at lower temp lower cost uh, and there's now a question of whether that's going to interfere with our water supply Gas leaks are a problem. There's been home exposure, explosions, and certainly tankers and storage is a concern. I, one thing I would like to point out, and um, I agree with David on the on the other fossil fuels too, and uh, because we we sort of David and I have a little option too that we're going to hopefully get to before we end. But one thing I would like to say, when you look at if you say, for example, no one has died from Fukushima, from the Daiichi plant situation, the one thing that disturbs me about when you say that is something like this. They evacuated, they did two evacuations, one to 12 miles and then one to 18, which is the 30 kilometers that David pointed out. They evacuated about 139,000 people for health reasons, to keep them healthy. So. When, when they, they stop 140 miles away is Tokyo. They put out an alert, the Japanese government, that nobody, they didn't want children drinking the water. Um, they found uh, evidence of uh, radiation in the agriculture, in the earth, uh, in, in, in the water. Um, so, I, Nuclear has uh, radiation has a problem that, you know.
it's not like you put your hand in the fire, your, your hand is burned, you know you got burned. Um, but these are things that, are, that have happened. I mean, you, you've got to think um, there's an awful lot of land there that's not going to be used. You have a problem of people, uh, what I heard the other day is people going back into the area that the Japanese have asked them to evacuate. But they're going back, their homes are there, and they're, they, they, so they're, they're running at risk. They're going to absorb some radiation. Their chances for cancer, perhaps in a year, two, ten years, increase. So um, the, the, the Japanese also had, had to, because they had nowhere to put the water. They didn't want to get a total meltdown. They had to let it go to the sea. I, 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 they had no choice. But those fish, are going to be you know, glowing, and, and, and it's not... Saying. And, and, of course, it's cumulative in the fish as it is right. in humans. Sure. So um, the health situation over there, uh, if you're Japanese and you live anywhere near around it, and even Tokyo, 140 miles away, the, the United States, the, uh, the uh, NRC here in the States suggested a 50-mile evacuation point, 50 miles. They're doing 18 with 139,000 people. So I think the health thing... Although, thank God, no one's died. Some of those workers who were there, all those contract workers, I might add, they get contract workers to do that kind of work. Uh, there's no question that they're going to, they're, they're rotating them, they're doing the best yes. they can, but they've got to deal with it. Somebody's got to go in there. There may be some deaths of some of those people. Uh, it's important to realize the 25,000 people plus or whatever it is, mm -hmm. is all because of the oh, tsunami. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay, right. let's get oh, that. That's, this is from a... A death standpoint, the Chernobyl incident is worse than this at this point. Is that yes. correct? Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. And we've only had two incidents in how many years since nuclear well, power? Well, we've had, we've had more than more two than 40, incidents. Huh? More than 40 <laughs> years, yeah. nuclear power's been in, and we've had... We've had some close calls. Yeah. like a David right. Bessie, Davis Bessie in Ohio in 2002. Right. There were some close calls. It, it's low I'm risk. Trying to give, I'm no. trying to give a John, perspective on yeah. I agree yep. that the risk is low. Okay. It's not high risk. But when it happens, the consequences are huge. you got 140,000 people Correct. living yeah. somewhere. We're not through with that. And that, that isn't over. Right. You know? So, this is the reason why they're trying to increase the uh, insurance. Its ability, and the United States government has agreed that 12.6 billion is as far as they need to insure. You yeah. would want to insure it at a higher level, and there's no insurance company that's willing to take on that kind of risk. Mm. So what do you do? Well, uh, David, David mm -hmm. the question I would ask you is, if the, ins if the nuclear power companies say um, it's safer, it's safer now, we've got all this stuff, it can't happen almost, you know, statistically, it's so rare that mm. why, why won't they accept that? Why won't they pay the insurance? Why, why, why are they... Because no company can accept that kind of a, an outcome, regardless of risk. If there's if any risk at all, they so can't the, accept it. Yeah, Too so, big. But if they're saying this can happen, mm -hmm. there's no risk. But, you, but if they say that there, there's a bit of risk, I mean, that's telling me that with all the talk about this can't happen, this we're totally safe, you know, we're, you know we're, this is all kind of like... Um, we're overreacting yes. that this can't happen here, but yet the insurance companies uh, and, and they're, they're, you know, the, the utilities will not, uh, they're limited by a certain act uh, to $12.6 billion of liability. Uh, if you look at the BP oil spill, you find that $12.6 billion or $5 billion is not enough. But the government, we, you and I, insure it beyond that. Right now, yes. they're, they're, so in, so the nuclear power industry has a limit, and and uh, you know if we if the government didn't cover the rest, 
they, they wouldn't think of building a plant. What stopped nuclear power is not the nuclear protesters that we saw before. Really, it's, it's, it's the bank. I think it's the bank. It's the money. It's Wall Street. Yeah. They're yes. not investing. Too expensive. Right. Uh, for the last 20 years, it's been too expensive. We have and a few minutes problem. left, and uh, we'll, prob we'll have a part well, two for this. Do you want to say any uh, remaining words at this uh, time? David has. I'm going to give that to David because uh, we have a, a couple of alternative. So we have a, a very nice solution, but I don't, I'm not sure, Dave, this time. Well, why don't we it? put up the alternatives to nuclear? Okay. Number seven. This, well, this will be the last yeah. slide. Number seven, please. Ron. You've indicated that there's a good chance. for conservation to improve our chances of uh, using less fuel, the decreasing the amount of fuel we need, 11%, increasing efficiency, 17 uh, and renewables in the future, maybe 10%, because of the spread out nature of the uh, renewable sources. Um, and the next situation would be that the, we need less energy perhaps in the United States because we are living beyond our means and beyond what we need. in terms of uh, a good life and the human development index from the UN has indicated what's necessary and if you go to uh, number nine you'll see the comparison between the United States in, you uh, energy slide use, nine? Uh, uh, per individual and the human development index versus Japan Germany and France who are probably living just as well as we are with okay. uh, useless, useless that, energy. That red line shows how much energy we're using. We're the United States, way on the right. That's the red line. The green line is our standard of living. Now, if you look to the next one, it's Japan. The energy they use is half what we use. The green line, just about the same. standard of living, quality of life. You look to the next one, Germany. Quality of life right up there, but their energy use half. And that goes right down the line. If you go over to, uh, what's that, Italy. Yeah, again, less than half. So I think Dave and I are suggesting that we can do an awful lot by using less energy. I mean, and that could be not so many lights in the room, new building codes, electric vehicles. Um, you know, there's a lot that we can save and not lose our quality of life. Okay, let's we end, can't let's do end. it overnight. Yeah. Right, we can't do it. Over. So let's end that at this point in time. We'll have part two. And really what we need to do You know, you get conservation at 10%, the efficiency about 17%. You know, my, my question would be next time, will this replace the nuclear power plants that Ron wants to, de, uh, uh, let's say, put out of commission? So those are the kinds of things. What is the trade-off? How fast can we replace them? All of these things are concerns. So we'll be talking about that the next time. Uh, you're welcome to uh, view the show the next time. And uh, thank you very much for, for visiting our program. It Thanks was for having nice us, John. Hopefully, it was worthwhile. And feel free to call next time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you.